Contrary to popular belief, what's not a bad thing? Being single and being okay with being single and not constantly looking for a relationship. Not knowing something. It's not shameful to admit it. Okay but I was 17 and didn't know pepperoni was a meat edit since people won't stop asking. I just never thought about it before. It's okay. I was 34 when I learned that narwhals are not imaginary. My wife, also 34, just learned this the other day when we were doing flashcards with our kid. N is for narwhal? That's stupid. They aren't even real. <laughs> Curious children. That's like the best thing for a child to be because they want to learn the facts and form their own opinions. But parents act as if they are like inappropriate or annoying. Curiosity in general, not just in children, is looked down upon I think. Asking for help. Hatter I'm so bad at this. I'm far too stubborn to ever admit I need help at anything ever. It's comedic to S point, but it's definitely a legit problem I have. Political leaders admitting they are wrong and doing a U-turn. I agree. Though it seems that political leaders that admit are wrong or change position tend not to be political leaders for long. Because they lose party support and political cachet. That's a shortcoming of the electorate. What's not a bad thing? Being a voter and acknowledging your elected representatives can make mistakes and that that shouldn't necessarily mean they are unable to do their job. That said, certain mistakes are politically unforgivable. This guy fucked up and admitted it. I'm not voting for him. This guy has had no fuck ups in a 40 year political career. He's perfect. Meanwhile second guy is lying about every fuck up and backpedaling to keep voter support. Admission of guilt should be rejoiced in today's political climate. Though following that logic you could also just end up voting for a very honest idiot. You could also just end up voting for a very honest idiot beats voting for a corrupt thief sometimes. Not being into social media doesn't mean you are behind the times. It's a choice. Something about people not knowing everything about me and what I'm doing in my life is very peaceful to me. I remember trying to install Facebook. No amount of words will describe how much I regret it. When I got bombarded with friend requests from people I know, I wanted to make an Instagram account to post some drawings I made. It lasted exactly 19 minutes before one of my classmates messaged me saying hey is that you, my name, and I still have no idea whether it connects you with people from your area or they just recognized it by the drawing I posted there. I think this is why Reddit has this idea that they are so different than any other social media platform. Here, not only do we not get connected to people we know, we also actively avoid it. For example, me and my sister both use Reddit and made an agreement to never look for each other's account. Saying no when someone asks you to do something that they are entirely capable of doing. Ugh. My neighbor just called me to come fix her guest bed. She has a house full of relatives from California in, and I really don't feel like exposing myself to whatever might be in that house. Plus, why can't one of them fix the damn bed? I said I was busy, but I might be able to do it later. I'm on the fence about this. Don't do it. Second. Third. Fourth. <laughs> Disappointing your parents or friends by your life decisions. Usually. They come around in time when they see what you chose is what makes you happy and that is what they really wanted in the end anyway. It can be an uncomfortable wait until that time comes. But it is shorter and feels better than a lifetime of regret. Or not. Some people are narcissistic pieces of shit who will never forgive you for choosing the wrong option. Yeah like my dad who hasn't spoken to me since I was 16 as he didn't like my boyfriend. I'm now 31, 3 kids deep and married to the same guy. Still doesn't speak to me. Crazy. God damn that is some mega level petulant behavior. I mean. WTF. I just can't. Why would you give up your life with your daughter and grandchildren over some petty non-approval of a teenage boyfriend? Especially when time has proved that you and he are compatible. I just cannot fathom that level of stupidly stubborn pride to go the rest of your life not speaking to your daughter because of something like that. Utterly crazy. 
putting your own happiness before the expectations of your family. Edit, I'm going to clarify that I meant more along the line that you shouldn't allow the expectations from family members like parents slash grandparents slash uncle slash aunt ctc to get in the way of what makes you happy. I kept the comment more open ended since situations can differ wildly and different people can have different reasons for feeling this way so I didn't want to be too specific. This issue came up today and I'm glad I've just seen your comment. Almost like it was meant for me. Thank you. I'm glad my comment helped. Whatever the issue is, I wish you luck in it and I wish you a lot of happiness. I've heard a bunch of people spouting off recycling isn't worth it. It is even worse for the environment than just throwing it away. This is case of hearing something correct and just blanket applying it to everything. There are certain things that are undeniably better to recycle. Specifically metals. And for glass and paper there are ways to make it environmentally positive. Plastics are the hardest due to contamination. But we can make it better as well as reduce single-use plastics. Yes corporations tricked us into believing recycling was the key to fixing the environment. But that doesn't mean that recycling can't be useful. The slogan reduce, reuse, recycle was very deliberate as they put the best ways to help the environment in the order it's most effective. I really wish I could bring my old plastic tequila at containers to my local Chinese place, like I take reusable bags to the grocery. I try reusing them, but they last forever, so I have way more containers than I would ever use. Perhaps wash the ones you don't need, and give them to someone who batch cooks their food. For example someone who frequents our slash meal prep Sunday. Now I not only need to make friends, but specifically a friend who is a meal prepper. Forget it. I will use my old plastics to build myself an introvert tower. Breakups. Sometimes it's better to end things instead of trying to hold a failing relationship together. Edit. Thanks for all the great replies to my simple comment. As well as the awards. I got broken up with by my first real gf on new years and all these comments have helped me see that life will move on and I'm not alone. May we all have better luck this year. In my divorce group there was a saying, there are plenty of failed marriages where the parties are still together. I got divorced years ago. I can't imagine this last year if we were forced to be in the same house with no break due to covid. I sometimes hear my neighbors having screaming fights and I realize there are worse things than being alone. There's a difference between being alone and being lonely with another person. Being lonely when you are with the person you are supposed to love is horrific. Being there. Why do you think you're supposed to love someone if you're unhappy when you're with them? I was on the other side of this and it sucks. I'm assuming somewhat equally mislead into thinking someone loved me for who I am. I really loved them, but after 2 years it turns out they were never being honest and didn't like me as a person basically and just lied to me hoping I'd change I guess. Really would've loved if they'd just left me alone from the start instead. I searched through and didn't see this one so sorry if it's already included. But not going to college is not a bad thing. I say this with some level of authority on the matter as I'm a college professor, full time, tenured. Over a decade into the game, I have seen hundreds of students go to college who have no interest in learning. They go because they are told they have to in order to secure personal success and financial stability. So many of these students fail classes, destroy their GPA, don't graduate, take out a ton of loans, etc. There are so many people with college degrees working in food service, retail, hospitality, etc. And none of them really needed a college degree at all. Yet they have one. They paid a ton for it. And now have to pay all those loans back for something they aren't using. And I get it. No time learning is time wasted. I truly believe that. But you don't need to be in college to learn. If you major in physics, but refuse to leave your town of 20. 000 people. And have no interest in teaching. It doesn't matter if you got a 4. 0. You'll be working slinging pizzas regardless. Edit. Thanks for all the awards everyone. I had a really bad day and that has made me smile a bit. I'm a big believer in trade schools and voteches for this. Even if you just do it for a few years, while you work your way through college or work on figuring out what you want to be, that's fine. So many schools slash school counselors slash teachers told us that we were second hand citizens if we didn't get our degree. 
That we wouldn't find good jobs. That life would suck. So I got the degree. Worked in it for 4 years. Hated it and quit. Started working in the trades. Figured out what I do like and make more now than I ever have. Don't forget the parents that would be mortified if their kid did not go to college. It really is a status symbol for adults to brag about which college their kids are going. Somebody who changes their beliefs. Know better. Do better. Right? There's a lot of things I used to believe or think when I was younger and more sheltered than I currently think. Age and experience change perceptions and I think that's healthy in most cases. Gaming for a couple, edit, few, hours straight. If you enjoy doing it and don't neglect your life there really is no difference to binge watching something or reading a book. I never realized how cool video games are until I started dating my BF. He mostly plays story driven games and they're really fun to watch. They're like interactive movies. My husband and I are both gamers, met in an online game. We prefer PC. But if there's a console game that seems interesting, we build a nest on the floor with blankets and snacks and I'll play while he's watching. Some story games have more than one playable character, men of Medan, until dawn, and we take turns. It's so much fun, edit, or oh man. Just woke up lol thanks guys. Admitting you're wrong. Edit. Since I guess some people aren't understanding. I'm not saying it's a popular belief to be willfully refusing to admit wrongdoing. I'm saying people are too prideful to do so. Right curly bracket. You don't even have to admit to the person that you are wrong. But admit to yourself. And make something out of it. I feel like getting into an argument with someone will lessen the chances of you changing their opinion. Their pride kicks in and suddenly they don't want to change their opinion. Only to prove you wrong. On the other hand, if you talk to them calmly and really try to understand why they think that way, you can tackle the problem at its core without them feeling attacked. Defending yourself against a customer who is extremely rude. I didn't know until about a week ago that the saying the customer is always right is actually supposed to be the customer is always right in matters of taste. If you have a customer that is a fuck it is plenty okay to tell them to fuck off. You don't want them as a customer anyways. I just started firing customers from my business a couple years ago and what a no firing those 5 to 10 customers has made me enjoy my job immensely more. One of the nice things about working in hotels is most have a do not rent list. It's just a list of people we've decided we don't want to deal with anymore for one reason or another. Sometimes they're a destructive drunk. Sometimes they're just a dick. The stigma behind talking about your pay with fellow coworkers. In the states it is legal. By talking about your wages you help ensure you and co-workers are being paid fairly. Edit. I made an oopsie. I think it was understood. But what I mean is. You should talk about your wages. At my old job. A manager for another site who was visiting my location tried to scold me for asking my coworker how much she makes. When she made a comment about not getting paid enough. He said it's illegal and super inappropriate. We were teenagers working at a car wash. Literally nobody would care if we discussed our pay. And it's actually, from what I've heard, illegal to try to prevent people from talking about their pay in the US. Yep. Lots of mangas don't seem to understand basic employment laws. My current manager tried pulling the you're not allowed to talk about pay. So I took her back to our break room and showed her the poster that specifically says it is illegal for an employer to dissuade employees from discussing wages. So she switched to saying that it makes things a hostile working environment. Of course I make it a point to discuss my wages with anyone willing. And she hasn't said anything since. I'm just always surprised how mangas can complete miss these legal posters that they themselves put up.